So this week on the Any Given Monday podcast, we have long distance and Irish international runner, as well as finishing second last year in the National 50K Championship in Dunedin, which I will be picking his brain on in this week's episode of the Any Given Monday podcast. Ian Fitzgerald, welcome to the podcast. How are we getting on? Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on board. Um, yeah, really good. Um, how are you? Not too bad, not too bad. Mate, just to get a, an idea, uh, um, and I could be wrong in this story, uh, about who you are and how much you push yourself. You had a 346 marathon and then you went to Gary O'Hallon and we're like, yeah. instead of going, to, you know, I want to get trained up to 330 or maybe even get a sub three. You told Gary you wanted to go straight into a 230 marathon for 346. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You'll be right saying that. I, I actually stood on his doorstep and I goes to him. He, now he now Gary looked at me and he thought I was mad at the time. I goes, I'm telling you now, I'm but in five years' time, I was 31 at the time. I said, When I'm 35, I'm gonna run two towards Martin. He goes, Yeah, all right, no worries. And he just took me money and he's just laughing at me. And he's saying, You're <laughs> off the head, you know. But yeah, no, but now now he he, he thinks I, I, he knows that I will break the two thirty, but who knows where I'll end up with it now, you know. I'm hoping to go further, you know. And what, what inspired you to go 230 instead of just going, you know, sub three? What, what made you go from that 346 marathon to go, right, I got to get 230? Because that's a huge... So that, yeah, so I didn't, like, this was early doors, and I didn't know much about running. You know what I mean? I'm very naive, very green. But I noticed everyone around me, like, like were well, running 240s, like, under 240. And I was like, ah, everyone's doing that. I want to go 230. You know what I mean? And then <laughs> I came to the quick I came to the quick realization that uh, it's not as easy as I thought it was, you know. Mm. Obviously because I uh, I'm, I'm fast and naturally fast, but I never had the endurance. So I've been through to- like trying to build the endurance, I've been through tough blocks trying to build that endurance. And it seems to be working now. But uh yeah, that was good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always look reflect on that day and and I'm getting closer to it. I will reach two to breaking two thirty. I got very close to him in Berlin, but it just didn't happen. These things happen, you know, it's hell, Sean. Yeah. Show yeah. Up to, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah, everything was perfect. The block went well, and then it just stuffed that week. Like, I fell ill that week, and then I just, it just didn't happen. But I was delighted to get 231. Like, I don't know how I got 231 in the end over in Berlin, but, like, it was, like, unbelievable. It was an unbelievable Gosh. experience over in Berlin. I know Michael said he wasn't really fond of Berlin. Mm, I was going to get to that. It, yeah, yeah, Berlin. Berlin is a different experience. Like blo- walls of people all the way around. There's no gaps. Like yeah. the support is unbelievable. You know, for the so whole I have thing. To disagree with them. The, the whole thing. There's not one gap where there's no no person on that road. You know, just yeah. it's great. It's really good. It's like a carnival of running. Like I got to be uh, Gachobi's, uh Patrick. Met Patrick and all over there while we were running around. Kachobi ran by us. We were running with Kachobi for about two minutes. Like Jeez. it's just open. It's open season. It's great. So if you are going to Berlin, I'd recommend going on the Wednesday. Like try to get over there early because all the athletes, all the Kenyans and all that come over early and they do train around the park around there. And if you're jogging around the park, you're definitely going to meet them. They go at about half six in the morning. So if you're up at half six jogging around, you're going to meet them 100%. And then mm-hmm. the day before the marathon, we were like literally doing our uh, strides with uh, all the Adidas pro athletes. Class. You know, yes. Yeah, it was really good. It was, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was my first time doing it. It was really good. Yeah. And you said your sudden is, uh, Sean mentioned it was 31. Had you been running before that or was it 31 is just, right, I'm looking for something and I want to take on a marathon or what? That was what, so, so I like I was always been, I had a background in sports. I um I played football a lot, but like mm. when I played football, all I did was run. I was the the, the uh, like I was the defensive midfielder, breaking up tackles, all that. I was never like tactically uh, technically gifted, like with a ball passing or anything like that. Like it was just break up the play, pass the ball over, and I just ran for days on the pitch. So in my head, I said to myself, when I hit 30, I'm giving up this. Because anyone I know that plays football <laughs> after 40 gets broke up. Yeah. And I said, I'm not going to be that. Like, running around with a knee strap on, on my back, some bitch, rubbing uh, winter green. Do you remember winter green? Rubbing winter green <laughs> on their legs and ankles. They keep themselves warm. I said, that's not me. You know? 
and I said, I, I need to find something. And I always, I needed an outlet. I just didn't want to be sitting still, you know. So I said, I'll give running a go. In, in my head, that's what my plan was. I didn't know what I was going to entail. So I started to do like 5Ks here and there. I didn't even do a full 5K. It was one of them that ran with the uh, app on, no, like the Under Armour app. I'd have it on my phone. Yeah, I'd, run. Like I'd get to two and a half K and I'd pause it. And then I'd repause it and I'd be telling people, oh, I ran 5K. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? uh, but I didn't really run it. I, like, I did run it, but I didn't do the yeah. time that I was saying I was doing. And then I, I quickly snapped out of that because like, it was like, that's not the way to do it. But then it wasn't until there was a nurse in my job, a palliative care nurse, Denise. She said, you'd love running in 2019. She said, you'd love it. It's, and you get to an event. Have you ever done an event? And I said, no, I've never done an event. And then me and my wife, Shauna, we signed up for the Irish five-mile runner. And we did it. And I was like, this is deadly. This is unreal. And then when I went into work on Monday, I told Denise, and then she goes, uh, why don't you not sign up for Dublin? They were doing lottery, lotto tickets at the time. Now the lottery. Yeah. I was like, lotto tickets? Where'd you buy these lotto tickets to get into the lottery? <laughs> 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 do I go out to London? Do I go out to the spa? Do I buy them? I to, you know, and she said, no, it's a lottery because I'm not tech, tech sta- savvy, you know. So it was, and she said, no, well, it's on the website. Go into it and then you lo- I didn't get it. I didn't get in the lottery. But uh, my auntie got unwell. And then I got uh, in contact with my cousin again, my cousin Martin. He was there, me we down with the ICU with my auntie. And he was talking, was telling me was running and all that. It was great. And how disappointed I was in not getting into the lottery. And then he was up and he was talking about me uh, to his barber. His barber is mad about running, you know. And uh, he goes, oh, yeah, my cousin, he's disappointed, he can't get in. He goes, I'll get my number. Now, the number was in someone else's name, but he got mm-hmm. me a number. And from then, 2019, I was just as booked. That was it. I got into Dublin Martin, ran 346, only trained up to 15 miles. And uh, like got a re- I got a bad injury. I got like runner's knee because I was just like – straight into the fall like i think the first long run was with the lads and the name is damo brown i wouldn't be running now damo doyle and uh he like straight away i was with them around 15 miles me forced ever long run with them at like eight minute pace couldn't even walk down the stairs after i was like thrown right <laughs> into the deep end i said what's wrong with my legs i walked down i was walking down sean it's my stairs i said i'm broke i'm broke i don't know what's wrong with me <laughs> all the lactic acid, all the doms, everything was just stuck in my legs. And I was like, what is going on here? And I just loved it. And I, and I just kept going. It, was, it took me about three days to walk again. Never mind. They were asking me to go on an eight-mile run then. I was like, what's going on? These <laughs> lads are mad, you know? It's mad when you get a sense of that, though, when you get so humbled by something. And then they're like, oh, we're going again tomorrow. And you're like, what? You know, that, 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 <laughs> you're... that's a driving factor in itself, isn't it? It's yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah they, them lads, you know, they, those great ones. We call ourselves like the Axe Crew, you know. They were based out of Watertown Warriors, and they took me in. Without them, give me the foundation. Of where, like, I ran with them for about two years, and all it was was like three times a week. We'd meet on Monday, we'd meet on a Friday, and then a Sunday, you know. But with all that, then it, that, that's what gave me all the foundation. I started learning all these boys and saying, this is actually good, you know. I really like this. And then, like I had no watch, I had no nothing. I was just going out and running, and it was great. I was just getting like getting runners high and I'm pushing myself, and it was great, you know. What was the biggest misconception you had about running before you jumped in with those boys? Because you're talking about lads that you said were doing like two forty and stuff like that, or was that later on? Like what was? What yeah, you that was later on. I was, was. I had no idea about times. I had no concept of paces. I had nothing. Like I was so naive. I was so green. Didn't understand that. And, it's only the lad, Damo Doyle, who's not like whatever, I'll be forever grateful for him. He literally took me underneath his wing. You know, he, he was the fastest runner at the time and he used to just put you down. Like he, he used to push you to your, to your max and try to get the best out of you, you know. But if he didn't teach me everything, like he got, like he gave me a pair of vapor flies to run me for uh, Martin in. And I was Jeez. like, what are these runners? Like, now the green vapor for us. Yeah. I paid him for them. He goes, yeah, so I didn't have much money at the time, you know. Uh, and he's like, yeah. And he goes, just throw me 50 quid a week. And like, stuff like that. Like, he's so kind, you know. And I didn't know what the runners are all about. 
you know, and I, and I was yeah, to a different level when I put them on me. I was like, <laughs> and well, I'm hooked. Not- I don't know whether to thank him or like he's had to put me into a bad hole because now you told Matt Nike put out the new runners now. I'm all over them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You're like Anto head to toe with Nike as well. No, 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 no. I'm more stage guy. You know, stage guy is quality gear. You know, oh, okay, it's really good. But Nike runners good. I'll wear any runners that will help me. If it like so. So I think the Nike runners are really pricey at the moment. So I wouldn't like. So I train like me long runs and me speed sessions in carbon plates. So I would like at the moment I'm using the Prime you know, X's. It's just I know they're like two inches uh, illegal, but I wear them in training because they just save their legs better. And they were only 150 euro, so they're half the price of the Nike Alpha Flies. So it just makes sense, you know. Mm-hmm. And then just stick the alpha flies, keep them up for races, you know. I'm not really runners. I, I'll get. I always give an honest opinion like that. Alpha yeah. fly feels a shoe. They're absolutely crap. They like they give you heat spots on your toes. They give you blisters underneath your uh, foot, underneath your forefoot where the bubble is. Like absolutely br- brutal. My feet are in bits over them. And I'd be alpha, alpha fly one are unbelievable. Best one I ever put me for. Yeah, and just the yeah. twos where it's good. I, I twos look where it's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I just, I, I was going to say, Alpha Flies is one of those things where I see the price, I'm like, I'm not that good of a runner to justify that. It was like when I was a kid, I was like, I want the Adidas Predators. I'm like, ah, just get the Umbro. I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Umbro all black. That'll do yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I was the opposite. I went to World Cups when I was younger because I couldn't afford the Predators to 200 euro. So they're like half the price. <laughs> Give me the World Cups. Oh, you know? Yeah. Or the, the, the uh, 90 uh, ones. But um, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, sorry, I go ahead. No, I was just, I was just thinking of back of my football boots. I was a Copa Mundial man. I never changed. Yeah. Always wore them. <laughs> never changed. Oh, no. But so, it's bad, I, like... A, I'm getting into the running like this and, and people are like, oh, have you tried out the cloud nine and this, that and the other? And I'm looking at them like, and it's only that we're talking about football boots. I could name every football boot in the world. <laughs> and now there's yeah. that many different choices of brands and runners. I'm like, uh, no, you have me. So it's all I'm about not. finding what works for you. Yeah. That's what I find, you know. I think the on runners are, like, are, are great for walking around in, but I wouldn't put them on my feet if I was running them. I think the lockdown in them is too loose and you get a lot of, a lot of ankle uh, issues on them, you know? Mm. I found it used to every so often, well, obviously I'm not, my, my run is struggling, but when I get tired, I'll clip my ankle every so often, but I found the on runners were actually slicing my ankle. I'd be covered in blood after a, a run oh, in them if I was doing oh, it long distance. Yeah, oh, but no, again, I think, I think they're I think they're a good strolling around to you, but I haven't, I haven't gone yeah. back to them. I did try them for a season. They look great. Anyway. They look great, yeah. but they're not. They, they, they don't do great when you're running around them. I ran in the months. I if they're on cloud as well. I uh, I ran in the months, and I uh, didn't like them. So they just I walk around with them every so often. I haven't even put them on my feet in months. But uh, yeah, I don't think they're great for the lockdown. Isn't great. And when I was when I used to play football, I used to go out my ankle all the time. So me, I, I'm, I'm very prone to go out my ankle. And with them runners, I go out them all the time. So yeah. someone. Yeah. Someone listening to the podcast that doesn't run that much is getting into running now. Um, any particular bands you recommend to them, or do you say go get checked out? Nah, I think like everyone like Man. money isn't everything, you know. Everyone thinks like just because it's so dear. I'm always like this. Someone like are you if you're getting into running, it can be pricey. I say mm-hmm. don't go out buying the expensive watch. Don't go out buying the expensive shoes. I go like look my first watch I bought at CEX. Bro, I waited for a few months. To learn, like it was 80 quid for the watch. I waited till I was in on that, you know, because everyone goes through fads of mm. like hobbies. Make sure it's not a fad, make sure you're into it because it's a pricey fad, you know. You ever see uh, people that go off? I have to be careful because I course a lot, so uh, <laughs> no, I was gonna say, fuckers. I was gonna say, <laughs> fuckers that go out and boy, like all the fishing gear next week, they're going out, they're playing golf gear and all that. Like, it's a pricey game when you like get like 300 quid. For a pair of runners, all that three hundred quids add up, you know. Especially yeah. when you're only meant to get five hundred, uh, five hundred uh, kilometers in it on the shield, like you know. Yeah, so, I remember talking to uh, I remember talking to a lifeguard before, and it was like, uh, like working the pool. It was like the one you need to worry about is not the one that just 
comes in any old gear. It's the one that comes the real flashy, new, shiny gear, like the trunks and all the rest, because yeah. they're just after getting into this fad and they're going to do something silly that you have to look out for. Uh, rather yeah, than the yeah. person who's just wearing the, the same old clothes, whatever popping in. You said you're not too tech savvy and stuff, but but you've done you have a bit of experience in uh VO2 maxes uh max testing. Yeah. How has that helped your running? Man, I I don't particularly use that in my running, Sean. You know, okay. what I do, I I, I uh, just do the test as a favor for Dara. I don't I get involved with that, you know. I think or me personally, I think the more information you have, you can get caught up in it. Like you could have a cause, you could have something coming up, you could be a bit mm. run down, and then all of a sudden you're just looking at your watch. I'm all for not looking at your watch. I'm all for listening to your body, running around, running at a comfortable conversation pace, really easy. That's the way I kind of work with me. I like like eighty percent of my runs are all easy. I do like one long run that's really like good. It depends how long it is. If it's fast, it'll be near uh, like go Martin pace or go race pace. And if it's like longer than like say 20 miles, say it's 22, 24, it'd be 10 to 15 seconds slower, you know? And then I'm getting that effort and that it'd be the same as like threshold and whatnot, you know? And then I'm 10 seconds faster on tempos, long tempos on a Tuesday or something like that, just to get me comfortable, you know? at faster paces and you've said you listen to the body and conversational paces but obviously your conversational pace has changed a hell of a lot since your first day on on his doorstep to now yeah, like, well, yeah so I, 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 don't, I just don't look at me watch i run the pace <laughs> wherever anyone is around me like so whatever my company is if you're a six minute kilometer or well, I, I run the miles or well, i'm just going to say six mm. minute kilometer or say nine minute mile and just off the bat I'll, I'll be running with you. I don't mind. Like, I'll run, like, I'm off of time and distance. I don't, it doesn't matter. The body doesn't know pace. The body only knows time and distance, you know? That's the way I walk. So, like, I'll, I'll be just there chatting away and uh, just run, running with the company I'm in. So, whether it be five minute pace kilometer or six minute pace kilometer, it doesn't matter, you know? The recovery easy is easy, you know? I think people push easy runs too much you know it's all for show it's all for strava or it's all for instagram you know it's not good you're gonna get injured the body can't absorb stress constantly you know yeah and it's funny you can see it with those who are and they have all the extra as you said all the equipment all the information they're like easy run and it's like is it Heart rate, yeah. 170. Yeah, me, but yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? now, now, to be honest with you, the watches ain't great for that. So unless you have a mm. strap on you, you can't really take for granted that the heart rate is that because like, if the cold gets underneath the watch, if the sweat underneath the watch, that throws the heart rate off because I'd be running around easy and uh, like all of a sudden I'd be looking down and me watch would be saying like it's 171. I'm saying I'm nowhere near that. Like I'm 120. <laughs> 28 max here because i'll be talking like we are here now you know hmm. so like, like technology can be wrong sometimes as well so that's why i'm not mad on it you know yeah the start of all my easy runs for the first i have a strap and all on me now uh through, through yeah. my zone but for the first five ten minutes i will be up at 170 180 and i'll be going a 6 15 kilometer pace to be like there's no yeah. way my heart's near that, and then it'll start to come down and it'll trickle and stuff. And I suppose with GPS, yeah. where where you are as well, it's not going to be the exact pace if you're in a forest and stuff like that. But speaking yeah. of forest, we're going to jump straight ahead to to last year. You were in Dunedin for the national 50k championships, um, and you your your time was unbelievable. You came second in that, yeah, um. Just because I'm doing it next month, the last 10, 15K, you struggled a bit with nutrition and cramping. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, 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 yeah. So what went on? My, so, you see, so in, in Donna D, look, I'm a bit green when it comes to nutrition. You know what I mean? I don't mm. really take it serious. I have started taking it serious now recently, but I'll get back to you on that. Um, I, I just was taking on too much and I took on too much and then like my body just felt like I was going to get sick and all. And then, then when I needed it and I was becoming depleted, I started cramping. My calf cramped with a lap, a lap and a half ago where I actually physically had to stop 
and I literally, I, I, I slapped me uh, calf, and I goes, for fuck's sake, come on, because I knew I was in second, I was like, yeah. don't give this up, you know what I mean, like, like if your leg falls off here, you're, you're going, you know what I mean, keep going, <laughs> and uh, that, that, that's the way it was, if you have to just limp in, you're limping, you just get it done, and uh, I just, lucky enough it didn't happen, but I couldn't push on where I wanted it, you know, Mm-hmm. Uh, like that whole week, I tried something different that week and that uh, before I done a day where, like, this is the thing when you like, there's loads of people around you, people, loads of people have a lot of views and mm-hmm. opinions. You need to be careful whose opinions you let in, you know. So I was like, uh, someone was saying to me, You're not tapering enough. Like, I don't know what made me listen this week. And I said, You know what? I'll try something new. You know what I mean? And I tapered a little bit more. And I went into Donadie Stale, as in like I was, my legs didn't feel like they had a pop. When I was running around at paces that I was running, like doing a training, I uh, it just felt really like two laps in Donadie. I go, this is gonna be a slog today. I oh, just wow. felt real heavy, my legs, everything. But like it was, it was a tough day, but like it was very rewarding, you know. Mm. I mean, it's, it's three hours, eleven minutes for fifty k is is so 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 painful. Yeah, uh, the uh, best so- moment in that whole race was when one of the lads that I trained with, Wayne, came in. He mm. came in after me, and they, like we literally embraced each other. It was great. Like we trained all together in for that build up. So Wayne Waldron, he's another yeah. ultra runner, and uh, he's like he's doing the hundred k. He actually got picked for the ACP again, so he's doing the he's going over to Scotland with uh, for the Irish team again. Like, oh, uh, so uh, he he came through and it was just great, you know. Uh, like and all our family, his wife was there, my wife was there. It was great. It was a great day, you know. Uh, before the podcast, we were talking about it a little bit, um, and you obviously were there a couple of weeks ago doing the, the the full marathon. Um, that you said that's pretty much like your 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 backyard. Well, I didn't say that, but like you you did a lot of different training and stuff there leading up towards the fifty k. Yeah, I, well, last year I never went to near it, but like in 2020 was the first time I did Donna Day. I did Donna Day. That was the so why I love Donna Day is it's the first race I did. The atmosphere is unreal. The whole like Anto Lee. I don't know. Do you know Anto Lee well? That's it. Uh, he, he's like, oh, no, he's great. That's Him, it. John O'Regan, and Jennings. They are trying to push it. Like they put on like so Anto works for pop up races. And he's trying to like get ultra racing out there. He's trying to raise the star, the standard in the bar in Ireland to like get ultra races uh, to the standard it needs to be. And yeah. let like Athletics Ireland uh, like to push them on, you know. But he, uh, what you call it, uh, he puts on events like recently he put on the twenty four New Year's event. Oh, true the year, that? yeah, true the year, yeah, true the year, yeah, 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 yeah. So no, he's no. doing all that so people can get qualifying time to enter mm-hmm. worlds. Uh, and the Europeans, so like they do great fundraising for it. Like they really are trying to push the standard. They're great people, you know. Mm-hmm. Like and he, he's a character himself. You know what I mean? He's funny. You know what I mean? Like yeah. He, like he, the whole like no calves, no uh, slaves, no arm slaves, no yo. Know? Like he takes the piss out of you, but he's he, he's a genuine bloke. He's funny, you know. Uh, no, his no, his heart about... is in the right place. You know. Yeah. Yeah, you know, he has. Out, the, yeah. I, the, I know of him. I've never met the guy. I've seen like the, the Facebook groups and stuff for um, you know, yeah. get under five fucking hours and that kind of thing. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's wearing the calf sleeves or anything like that. They give them abuse and just like be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. See me wear these in the run today in the park. And they do like, and they do. They live up to it. Like he's uh, so the the MC when you're running around with calf sleeves, he roars abuse at you. Same That's what you Anto, do with no, 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 no. Uh-oh. That's the other MC. And say, it? oh, you're not meant to be here with them. Get them <laughs> off you. Like, so he does. He's, he, he, they live up to it. The whole atmosphere is great. Uh-huh. Like, and uh, like the whole five hour thing. Did you see the video of it, the, the, uh, the woman coming on these five hours last year? Now? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I think, I think the fitness, the, the fitness dudes has her up on his page. Yeah. It was him who recorded it. It's epic. Like, that, that is some buzz. Like, you know? Ah, oh, the amount like, of people screaming. Uh, Ah, it's unreal, man, you know. And then like that, then that woman getting underneath the five hours. I don't know what Percy, maybe that was a goal, I don't know. But like that he did it for like I think it was a million views of that video. Like to see what it, it's epic, like you know what I mean? Like it's unbelievable, like you know? I can't put it. But um what was I saying? What what was the question? 
Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's all you can go. I'm gonna go off the tangent here. I, know, I have a few it, different questions not... off that, but how are you set for it this year? I suppose we'll go with it with, with uh, the 50k. Yeah, like so I've I've figured out what the best training is for me and what I'm getting the best out of myself recently. Like and as I said to you, it's like mainly easy running with like a Tuesday uh, session and then a Saturday long run kind of session, you know, depending on the day. Uh, and then obviously trying to up my mileage, you know, like I'm I'm I'm, I'm around hundred miles a week ish, a little bit like under, but I had to build up to that, you know. Um yeah, so yeah, I'm I'm feeling good, feeling fit. I'm getting fitter each block and like I'm getting like it's good. So my I I'm happy with like making slow process over a long time because I don't want to risk getting injured. My like the fear I'd have is like if I was younger because like, I'm 45 now, my fear is getting uh, like tired and something and being off, not being able to run for ages, you know, and not making any process. So I like little steps. So that's why I don't push the boundaries. That's why I'm not out there trying to do 1K reps in three minutes and all. I think that's okay. the kind of stuff that gets you injured, you know. That's so right. I, I know where where I can end up in in 10 years' time if, 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 I, if I keep going on the path I am. And I'm willing to play the weight game and get there. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter when you get there, once you get there, you know? How is your tapering going to be different this year? Uh, well, I come up with this tape. I, I, like, myself and Gary come up with a taper that works great for me. I kind of like do high miles in two days before, uh, like Monday and Tuesday. Monday, I might do a light little double. Tuesday, I'll do a, a lot, like eight mile, nine mile run. And then Wednesday, I'll start tapering. It's like a short taper. And then there's like the legs will be poppy then, and then like trying to do a light session on the Thursday before. And I'll, I'll do a Wednesday. Mm. So if it's the Sunday, I'll do a session on the Thursday. If it's a Saturday, I'll do a session on the Wednesday. I'll just be live session like probably one k reps, like at three. We're going three three thirty pace something like that. So just just to get the legs on moving over, you know. Slightly different definition of light me and you have, but yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I'll, I'll take a rest day probably on that Thursday. Then, yeah, I don't I, me and rest day. I probably won't that year. I never took a rest day before Berlin. I'm like, it's just mad if you get your taper right, like paces you you struggle with, like so, like going in your training just seem a bit easier. They just everything seems great if you get the if you get the taper right. It just it's like this flow when you're like you, you, you of this it's a flow of disbelief that you're running so easy at paces that you thought were going to be hard. That's the word I was trying to think. That's the sentence I was trying to think of. <laughs> that's, that's it's just disbelief. Saying. Yeah, and you're waiting on things. You're gonna say this shouldn't feel this good. What the fuck's happening here? Why, <laughs> you know, why is me? Why am I able to move so handy here? You know, yeah, so it's good. Um, you did Berlin. Uh, you said two thirty one, but two months yeah. before that, you did two thirty four in Cork. Was the yeah. training blocks much different between the two of them? And like after Cork, no, you no different for Berlin. No, 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 no. So the only difference with Cork was I had to be conservative because it was twenty degrees. Mm. Uh, yeah, it was really hot, hot, humid. Couldn't escape the sun, so I literally didn't push the body that well. I was smart, you know. I was tactically smart. Um, I just like was throwing water on me whenever I can. That was probably the best without getting any of voice nutrition wise and taking hydration on I've ever, ever ran, you know. Because usually me and heat is one thing. I'm gonna bunk. I'm mm. literally brutal in it, you know. Like uh, I'd like there was this this woman I'd forever be grateful for. Her. She's sitting there on a deck chair with a little freezer box, hands me a bag of voice. Stick it on me hat. It's best underneath me hat. It's the best thing I ever done. Just killed me right down. She's a, she's a saint, whoever she is. <laughs> Call her Saint Bridget. <laughs> God knows. It could be, be Bridie. Who knows? But uh, she yeah, she was a saint, man. I tell you. So it, it was a, a God's a God's gift it was to me, you know. Mm. And I just put it on me hat. It was a bit awkward, but then it started melting. It was great. It's best thing ever. And it, like I I always look back on that and I say. She was a saint of a woman, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Cork was one of those things I did it myself. Now, my idea of taking it easy was a four fifteen, not three minute difference on this two thirty. But uh, yeah, but 
it was one of those days that you just knew from walking down, you're like, I think everyone knew. I think everyone had that little yeah. fear going, this is not going to be nice. It no, just had no. that feeling of heat that us Irish people are just not used to. And it's just like, oh, this, this is going to be a different kind of day. The last, like, I think it's from 23 Mile and Cork. So that's the second time I do. I'll do Cork again this year. I like Cork, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last, like, is it 5, 5K? I think we're, we're thinking at 23 Mile. Uh, so, like, that, that long road there. That long road is unbelievable. Oh, um, like I contemplated life a few times in that round. Even the fourth year I did it, and the second year I did it, I said, why? Like, you, you question yourself, saying, what am I running for? Mm. Well, why are you doing this <laughs> to yourself? Dude, like, the fourth year I did it, I actually, I, I was staying in that hotel the fourth year I did it. That Not the hotel you pass here, I left. Yeah. I forget what it's called. I was staying in that hotel, and I said, there's your hotel, just go into it. Just go into your hotel, <laughs> and this <laughs> is all of it. And it, it was lashing out that year, like it was pissing out, like it, like it didn't stop raining for like yeah. all morning. And that year, and I was like, yeah, like it's rounded right here. Yeah. Just go in, have a hot shower, and just that's it. Sure, does it? You can run again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Why not for the wood medal uh, at the end of it? <laughs> oh no, no, yeah, it's a wood medal. Now come here, I'm not mad in medals, you know. So he does me wife, I have loads of them up there. So it's like we go around. And like any time I do a race, it's like, who can I give this medal to? So yeah. like that. and it's always a little brother or a little niece or something like that. Say, hey, look at what I'm at the winning for you today. Here's a medal. And I'd be giving it to them, like just so I get rid of them. <laughs> but I don't race that much either now, to be honest with you. I'll probably do like a few couple of races a year, you know. I do about three or four like main goal races a year. Everything else mm. I do for the crack. Because at the end of the day, like that's what it's all about. Mm. Having a bit of crack. One of the races you did last year, um, or maybe I'm, I could be wrong on this. You did the ACP for Ireland last year. Did you do hundred k? I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I got to represent Ireland in the hundred k. Just the chance came along. It's like, and I get, I'm like, would I be able to do hundred k? And you question yourself. Hundred k is a long pace, and I know I did fifty, and I said that's double that. And I was like, could you turn down? Like I wasn't doing it. And then I goes, could you till you get the call, right? And mm. I goes, will I, will I do it? And then he rang me. As soon as you get the call, that like represent your country. So yeah, yeah, can't wait to do it. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. And if you ask anyone that was around me, I say, nah, I'm gonna tell them I'm not doing it. Fuck that. I'll get injured. I'll be in bits. I'll be broke up for weeks. You know what I mean? And uh, and then he rang me. I wouldn't mind. I was in Gary O'Hanlon's house, and uh, just about three days before, and I said, ah, Gary, I'm not gonna do that. What's mm. the point, man? I'll be broke up. And it, look, I think ultra is a, an older man's game. You know what I mean? I think like of a lot more to do in the marathon, and then I'd like to move on to ultras. You know what I mean? Because I like pushing myself. You know, and uh, and that's what I was saying to Gary. And then I rang Gary up after. Oh, I guess I'm doing the hundred k. He goes, what? He rang me and told me got in. I couldn't say no. You can't be yeah. throwing down your vest. <laughs> and he goes, ah, come on, we do it. You know. And uh, so we did it. We kind of had a group, like the same, the same group of lads, like me, Wayne, Pete Thompson, you know. Uh, and uh, he, he's a lad from Belfast. He moved down to Dublin for me, you know. If I didn't say that, he, he got mad. I met, <laughs> I met Pete a couple, at a couple of races, and all of a sudden he moved down to Dublin, you know. But uh, he's a great lad, you know. He, uh, what you call it, but he definitely moved down to Dublin for me. Even his wife would say that. <laughs> <laughs> I met him the fourth time. How do you time, follow COVID. that question? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, he uh, he COVID after COVID, there was a 50k national champions up in the north, and the same thing. It was like Cork, it was really hot out, and uh, Pete was up doing that race, and not like and I, I, as I said, I was very green back then. Do you like? Oh yeah, I didn't know like paces. I thought I could uh, do paces that I couldn't do. You know what I mean? Until I started yeah. educating myself on what. Well, well, different paces where and what standards you need to meet and i was like i went up to the north thinking i'm not finishing the top three here i could win this very naively <laughs> you know what i mean like because yeah. it's oh, i'm a great believer in like out outdoor uh out like people in your outer group like that aren't in your group like if you let them voices in they can dictate you you know what i mean like and that's what i was doing at that time like people that hadn't got a clue what they were talking about knew that I was fast. Like I had an 18 minute K, uh, 5k. You were deadly at running. You know what I mean? You were unreal. And then when you let them voices come in, 
and then them distractions then like you start like saying maybe i'm deadly well it wasn't deadly you know what i mean I was saying, <laughs> maybe, maybe i can do this maybe uh-huh. I can do it. it was this lad that i was running with at the time you know and uh he he was saying nah definitely you can do this you can do that and then i started to believe it because like you are a product of your surroundings if you're around someone that's telling you you're deadly you're gonna believe you're deadly you know um and i then went up the north and i met pete and uh, Pete, I didn't know Pete at the time, and he was, and I was racing him. He didn't know I was racing him at the time, but I ended up blowing up. The heat was roasting him. He was like, ahead. I, I, I did my best to get ahead of him, and I got ahead of him. And then we were having this back and forth race. Now he completed the race. I DNF. Uh, yeah, I, I blew up because of the heat. But uh, that's when I first met him, and then I met him again down in Donna Day. Um, in 2021, uh, he, he bet me down there as well. I let him have that one. He bet me for like 15 <laughs> seconds. I went all too fast, and he went by me again. And then he happened to move down to Dublin by chance. And uh, like them, he then made I made we made contact with our contact through Strava, and we've been training ever since, you know. Then, Has that brought you on in terms of advancing you a little bit? Not to give him a big header and we'll get him on next week. Oh, but, um, yeah, we'll get, on? get him on next week. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, to be honest, what, like, I think the more you start uh, progressing, the more like, people at that, that level, you start tracking um, them kind of people around you and then like, you start to form a group. So I've always had like ambition to start up groups like like there's all, always been like my like ambition to get a group together and get them running and then like that's how that kind of happened I, I don't think i think running is a solo game when you're out there on your own but i think with people around you you can get like you can benefit so more they bring you on you know so like the likes of p came along then it was me and wayne him and p and then gary started getting involved with us and then we had the likes of and though then coming along, you know, and it's great. Like, oh, yeah, actually, the way I met Anto was so I, I joined Instagram. I'm not on Instagram long. My, my best mate just kept going, You need to get on Instagram, you need to be showing people what you're doing. You know what I mean? I was like, ah, no, I'm no interest. I wasn't on social media, nothing. Like, I'd like never, I'd like growing up, I was like, ah, don't be arsed. When I was on it, like the people on Facebook taking pictures of their dinner. I was like, I don't want to be seeing this shit. <laughs> if I want to see a dinner, I look at me mad that I'm eating a plate of dinner. You know what I mean? I don't <laughs> need, need, need that, you know, putting a picture of saying, look what I'm having for me dinner. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, I just got off the very quick then. And uh, and then always we wait, no, I'm telling you now, just do it and do it for your running. And um, that's it, Ian is running. Look, I used to watch that fella. Ben is running all the time. I said, yes, that's a catchy yoke. So that's when I put it up. I actually made a mistake then. I forgot the password. And uh, what was it? It was Ian is running uh, for the fourth time around. And now it's Ian is running underscore one because I forgot the password of the album. That's where the <laughs> underscore one came from. <laughs> oh, stop. And so, like, I bought, a fa- I bought an iPhone. I got jealous of my wife. She got an iPhone for, her, like, she's a beautician and she's starting up at a shop and she got it for her content, you know? I got jealous that she got an iPhone 14 and uh, I goes, ah, fuck this. And I bought myself an iPhone 14 then. And then I goes, I need to do something with this. You know what yeah. I mean? What am I going to do with this phone? How, how can I justify spending 1,200 quid on a phone? I said, I goes, right, I'm at the starting up Instagram. And then I just started following people while they're training. And that's how I got I got on Instagram. And then how this is this is the long about story, how I got to meet Anto. Me, uh, Nathan Ward, I don't know whether he's now Nathan Ward. He is. He's like in, in Iron Man, you know? He's doing like, like he's 920. Yeah, 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 he's an animal. Yeah. He's 920 uh, Ironman full there in Roth recently, you know. Uh, so he, he I was texting him through Wayne and he goes, I'm going to do it. it an FPT, uh, isn't it? Where you, do, you test out your power. FCP, I'm, I'm doing yeah. it. I'm doing it. Yeah. I'm doing it at half hour in the morning, he said. And he goes, I goes, he goes, I oh, goes, half hour in the morning. Now I'm mad. I never met him before, and I goes, "Yeah, I'll see you there." He's like, "This fella isn't going to show up." What do you mean? It was see the way it is out now, freezing, minus two. Mm. He's in a garage with a what you call a, a swift bike set up and a turbo yeah, trying yeah. to set up. He didn't think I was going to show up. I text him I'm outside your door. Me with me little iPhone because I was just getting content of anyone doing <laughs> fitness at the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was putting her up. He's saying, you're mad. Why are you doing He's just looking at me mad. I was just like, like, you want to see him going flat to the mat in the turbo trainer? 
And then me and him came really good mates. And then one day, uh, Anto just came over and won the long runs. That's how we got Anto involved then. It's just, that's like, it's just, it's just all happens naturally, you know? <laughs> Videos and stuff he's putting up lately have been absolutely quality there out in the Phoenix oh, Park. Mad. You're doing the, the 338 pace is the moment you're doing for your long runs mm. and your Sundays. That's the, the Dublin um, Endurance Project. Is that is that you group? Yeah. That so me uh, and Pete, so me me and Pete and Gary I came up with that uh, DEP, you know, and that, that it's all about getting a group of lads together and then that are uh, like aiming to be sub 230s or try to break that barrier or bridge the gap between uh, like non elite and sub elite and then seeing how far we can uh, get with it, you know. And like the whole concept is getting a team trying to work towards them goals together instead of being out in the park on your own, busting your bollocks and like hating it. You know, like once, once you have someone around you, I find it's easier to work with, you know, and no matter what level you're at, you know. Are you working and, with that towards Seville? Sorry, Eric. Is that Seville yeah, so, uh, you're doing that, or is that just Anto? It, oh, that's Anto and Gary doing that. Okay. Seville, you know? Yeah, and then oh, then there was a group of us doing Donna D. Hmm. He, he got injured, so he's not doing that at the moment. He's more geared towards Belfast. Excuse me. And his natural championship. And then it's me and Wayne. We're doing Donna D then. But I think Wayne is going to use Donna D as a train one for the 100k now. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> trying yeah, yeah, it's like when I look at it, it like but when I so when I first uh got accepted like for the hundred K, uh, I felt the same way I did about the marathon at the time. I was like, How am I gonna finish this marathon? I'm only at the train up to fifteen miles. Still have another another eleven miles to go. So when I went past fifteen miles, I was like, What's next? So mm. I got the, I, in in when I was training for the hundred k, I only got the forty miles. It's like I have twenty one miles to run here. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't know. Like it's just didn't know what was gonna happen. In, in the hundred k, it turned out me like me and Pete. So me, Pete, and Wayne were it was like something out of narcos. Me, Pete, and Wayne were sitting in this like dodgy B and B in up in Antrim. Yeah, at the time where we were staying, like the whole team was staying, and me and Pete were bagging up, like putting in like powdered uh, carbs in the oak. Wayne just literally strapped a load of uh, water around the uh, small bottles of water, and his nutrition went to tea. But I was like, and Pete turned around me and goes, I put nothing in that. And Pete goes, I nah, put a little bit more in it, and we like put the powder in. <laughs> Wayne, I know, I was like, why is like it look like he's a bagging up there, lads? You know, <laughs> and, uh, I end up getting I end up getting stomach issues over because I was so naive like to the hundred k, like not realizing that I'm not gonna use because I'm like uh, running slower. I'm not using as much energy. I'm not burning as much fuel. And then I was over fueling, and then my glycogen levels were going up. I end up getting like a sugar plug, and I end up getting sick. Everything during that race. Like, I was like walk running for eight miles and then like I told two people I said I'm not going to be able to finish this you know and then I went by my ma and my wife and all that and then I just want to go by them I was like I look like a, like a disheartened soul I was like I'm in bits here and they was like ah, on, you can keep going and then I'd, I'd go by them and I'd start walking again I was like tormented soul I was like what am I going to do here and then I got running a little bit more and the same thing happened I got to the top of the hill and I look like, after telling like this lad Darden, I goes, I'm done here, that's me done. And uh, I got a bit of hot water into me and I dissolved the sugar plug. And then I got to the top of the hill and started running again. And then I, I was chasing down, like trying to uh, do seven thirty again. It was just mad. I just roller coaster of emotions in that day. Like I haven't had a day like that. Is there a want to get a better performance on it? Yeah, so I do like I toyed with the idea of going back over again today, but like as I was saying earlier on, like like I've got plenty of time to beat that. Like I that day I truly believe I could have done like the national record that day. I truly do believe like I was in shape for it. I just did, I just I went up there to do the experience. I didn't want to go out and blow up and then like be like, Oh, why did I do that? You know what I mean? 
Like, yeah. so, like, clear on, I forget his second name, he did the national championship that day. I think I could remember him that day. And I toyed with the idea the night before it, whether they do or not. And then Anto, Anto Lee, I was talking to him, the lad that runs pop up races and all that. And he just said, Hey, why don't you just get an experience at it? And then go at it again. And then I thought, like, it's kind of unfinished business, whether I want to do or not. And I just think 100k takes a lot out of you. Now, we didn't take a lot out of me because, uh, that day. I think it's because mainly I, I walk around for eight miles, to be honest with you. And uh, it didn't take much out of me. But, uh, like, I think if I went all out, it would break me up, you know. Not as in break me up. I, I wouldn't be able to train probably for about a month, six weeks. I'm not willing to sacrifice that time because I need to, I need to progress in the marathon time. The marathon is where it's at. That's what I love, you know. Mm-hmm. You said um, 2.30s goal. You also said you're doing Cork this summer. Is that where you're going to make the next attempt for your 2.30 or do you have a different event I up for your 2.30 no. or whatever it feels? I I I um I'll do Cork. I do I do kind of do the all the same races every year now. You know, kind of got into a routine that I found out what's good. Me, I'll do down a day. I'll go to Cork, and then I'll look for a winter uh, like kind of uh race or even autumn like uh Dublin. Won't do Dublin. I kind of do that with Team Kobe, and then I'll always do that with Team Kobe now. So I'll never run Dublin competitively again. I'll always run that with Team Kobe. And then I will uh, do Valencia this year. I'm aiming to do Valencia. Some people say so that's three main pretty- long races. Or three long races a year, like three marathons a year, like our 50k in thrown in that. So. Valencia, that's, that's December, isn't it? December 2nd. December, yeah. Not a hot one. Yeah. And what would uh, where would you think you will get the the two thirty? What or, or is it going to happen this year? What do you think? Yeah, or not? No, it'll hundred percent happen this year. Well, you can never say hundred percent something that's going to happen because you know I don't know about you lads. When you show up to a line, you just don't know what's going to happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Long distance like endurance sports is mad. Anything can happen on the day. You know what I mean? Uh, but if if I show up, everything show uh works on the day. I definitely have the like potential to break two thirty. You know. Yeah. All it, all the stuff I, you know, Anto. All the stuff you know now. Looking back on that lad back in twenty nineteen, I was getting into running. If you had to tell him a couple of bits, of you back in twenty nineteen. If you had to tell him a couple of bits of advice about getting into what you're getting into, what would you tell him? Be patient. Um, you're a product of your surroundings and uh, trust find someone you trust to guide you and stick with them they won't steer you wrong and that's what I got I got that in the likes of Damo I got that in the likes of Gary O'Hanlon you know uh, mm. but it's just the first two years I was just impatient just impatient I stagnated in the second year where I was only running 247 and then like I kind of wasn't with Gary and them that, that year was kind of getting frustrated, left them, went with Noel Carroll. Noel Carroll's a good coach and he's a good per- a good bloke. It just wasn't for me, you know what I mean? And I uh, I then said, right, I went back to Gary after doing Donaghy in 2021. I did 3.21. I said, now, now I made progress, but I went to Valencia that year, who went 2020, and I ran another 2.47. And I said, this isn't happening for me. You know what I mean? And that's because I was trying to rush it. Not, not, not understanding the paces and what, what, what goes into getting to the next level, and then after that, I kind of like gave into it all. I said, right, I'll just follow it, see in front, in front, like whatever you give me, I'll follow it, and then see where it leads me. And like my for my aim in Cork in twenty twenty one, am I right? Twenty twenty two was uh, just to break two forty three. I ended up to run on 2.48. I was just listen, trust the process, built me endurance up, which, which I was lacking was speed endurance. You know, I had speed, I just didn't have speed endurance. What's the difference to train for that? Ah, it's just getting them longer blocks in, you know, like running at paces, like doing your four by uh, four mile by five, like doing blocks of Martin paces, you know, and that's what I did from then on, you know. Like, I always looked at them and said, I didn't really, I don't have to do that. Take me, it's not the easy option. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do the blocks. I'd run at a slower pace, but I'd long, run for lower, like, a longer. Like, I was fairly comfortable around 650 pace, 
So instead of doing the session that he'd send on, I'd go out and do 20 miles at 650 pace. You know? <laughs> Stuff like that. <laughs> It's like stick right, on <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. And that's all I'm doing. And then mm. then it's like listening to your body then, you know? And then just saying, Yeah, like just just get out there and, and walk and just listen to your body how good. Mm. Like I'm gonna say surround yourself around uh, the right people, like there's like there's great people around. If you just listen to them you know, and let them guide you, you'd be grand, you know. Mm. And that is the great thing about getting involved with a group and nowadays, them days that you want to just go at your 650 pace, there's going to be the others who are going, what do you mean? No, we're going oh, no. at this today and it's good to keep Might you. Might be asking you know, Anto to go 650 pace. There's no <laughs> chance of that. Oh, the video production they all has down is like, no, nah, you're ruining me for however long it is. Oh, stop, man. He's, he's balls to the walls, that fella, you know? He's, he's flat out, you know? You got to love his drive, you know? Mm. But that hit that wouldn't that just doesn't work for me because I know I get fly or injured and I, like running for me is like it's a lifestyle. It's not like in smash grab bang I'm out of here. I'll run, I'll probably be running man on sixty lads, you know. Mm-hmm. And, 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 out, and, and and the more people can help along the way, the better, you know. So there's a lad Dan is that O'Farrell? Do you know Dan Fuzz? Is that his name? He's on Instagram. He started like this pastry pace run and he had like 80 out and he's talking to me. I was like, great. I said, that's deadly. I said, have everyone on the granny running. That's the objective. Yeah, everyone running. It's great. It's great for the head. It's great for everything. You know what I mean? So like, that's my whole concept of running. I said, running is enjoyable, you know? I always say to people and people are like, oh, look at these running fast. I say to them, you get the same feeling as I do when I come over the line at like whatever. If I hit a PB, you get the same feeling. Your body doesn't know paces. You know what I mean? Like you, you, like you still get that euphoric feeling when you come over the line. I'm at a PB in. Like the show, we get the same feeling I get when I cross over. Whether it be two forty one, or he's at two hours. Like mm. it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think we always feel like the, a, a certain time start. You you feel even better for getting a sub three or sub two and a half. But yeah. breaking a record is is breaking your own personal record. It's the exact same feeling. Yeah, it yeah. Expand 100%. more and more. It's, it's all the same, really. Yeah, that's it. But for fair play, that them lads are breaking, breaking boundaries. But we're everyday runners, like you know what I mean. We have lives, we have family, we have all this, all the parental bubble. These boys are living for training, like they are like waking up, training, recovering, everything, you know. So, you know, like that's why they have the ability to do all that. Mm. We have to go over the ground, get bread from me, ma. You know what I mean? <laughs> we have to go, to go out to walk. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. constantly on my feet. And I'm not yeah. on my feet. I'm on the bike running around my athletes that I coach, you know? So like, um, it's it's all stuff, you know? And what you've said on the podcast, Ian, as well, I've no doubt that a lot of people are going to take a lot from it. And because we get so many different types of people talking about various levels of running, but it, it does come back down to that consistency. And, and so many people are going to just, be able to just take a load off their own shoulders and just be like, what am I getting worked up about? You know, just go out and run and yeah. just go out and enjoy it and, and forget about the watch for a little while, which is a big thing. Everyone's so focused on the Strava and, yeah. and the watch and stuff. And and you, in fairness, you're doing that and there's so many different groups setting up in Dublin as well that you've been a part of yeah. and people are just getting out and enjoying it, isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great, you know. With all the NRC, man, it's great. The whole concept of NRC is great. It's just like get everyone running as well, you know what I mean? And the sense of community over there. Like I'll give you a story. My watch was robbed of work and then all them boys like and girls over in inner city, they kicked me out of the group. I went to the Dwayne. Dwayne is one of the co founders. Carl's you're a co founder of Inner City. And I go, why'd you kick me out of the group? I don't worry, pal. I go, I go and why you oh you hate anything public or like speaking even this, this is a big thing for me you know and uh i goes you better not be doing that at the next event where you call me up the stage and ask me to talk because i'm not having any of it you know what i mean and then <laughs> it turned out that they all got a collection together got me a new watch new pair of runners and all you know like if that uh-huh. happens it's that sense of community in the flats if something happens to one person they all come together and they, they, they all they, they all pull together you know and it's great you know Wednesday nights over in the Garmin is probably the best day of the week I have. They're, they're getting out with a gang. It's unbelievable, you know? 
Yeah, we'll put that in the uh, the podcast notes as well. You've given me a shit ton of things to put in this, by the way, Ian, on the notes. <laughs> like, oh, stop. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Dublin Jurens Project. I got Gary over here. Like, yeah. uh, you've worked with, like, I just saw here one of my notes. You did stuff with uh, Denor Harris as well. Were you with them? Because there's a few race reports you yeah. mentioned in. I, I, run, I run for Denor. The- Denor is my club. So We've done nearly an hour that. of a podcast and we haven't even mentioned your running club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I run with the North. Yeah, I can talk all day, you know. <laughs> so when you first asked me to come on this, I was like, what does he want me to come on a for? Like, I'm just out here. Like, well, when I, as I said to you, I'm just out there running. That's all I'm doing. Like, yeah. like when I always say Ian is running, Ian is just running. That's all I'm doing. Or, or Ian is helping someone run. You know what I mean? That's all mm-hmm. I'm doing. But uh, I was like, like I looked at all the other lads you had on, like the likes of uh, Michael Fox and all that, and then you had Ricky Wayne, like Ricky Wayne, fair, like Ricky Wayne, what he's doing is great. You have to look mm. up to stuff like that. Same with Michael, what he's doing. Like I look at people like that, and like that's what drives me. I know I can get to them levels. You know what I mean? Mm. There's another lad, Robert Morphy, <clears throat> who's ran a two twenty Martin. The likes of Gary. Now Gary is a bit of a freak now. Gary, Gary has always had talent when he was younger. You know what I mean? So only for his accident and then he came back to a later stage in life but he's always been talented but the likes of that Robert Murphy they all started the way I did and we're hitting the times I'm hitting and I know in like in 10 years time that I'll be down to that level maybe it, probably 4 years time 5 years time I'll be at that level it's about holding it then you know mm-hmm. and just being like grounded all the way not rushing not overthinking and just trusting the process as you say consistency just keep building the foundation like literally build a block, build another block, and just keep going and going and going. When I say block, it's like a trainer block between races. You know what I mean? You don't have to race every race either. You know that's like that's the one thing I'd say to people. Too many people are booking races week in week out. You need to pick a key race, walk towards it. It's all right that B races, or if you want company around, go out and just use that race as a, a stepping stone onto your main goal. You know, I find everyone's everyone's just booking races just for the sake of it. And you won't progress doing that, you know, if you're out there racing all the time, you know. Yeah, and just burn out. Yeah, burn out. That's what, that's what, exactly it, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, we're I'm... looking, we're looking forward to seeing how you get on in this fifty k and and seeing how. Hell yeah! Actually, the... we we. Like I was it. just about to say that I had to go on the whole podcast and have not asked Sean how he's fixed for Don a D. Yeah. How he's fixed <laughs> oh, I don't know, Bob. You know? <laughs> I see. I see something on the story there that you still you you twenty nine k twenty more nine k to go. Twenty nine more k to go. I don't know how. I've no idea what I'm gonna do for pace stuff like that. I'm on, I only feel like I'm gonna get back into somewhat decent to what I've done before. Um, uh, these these loops and stuff. We're like no, as we're recording the podcast, just because I know this is gonna come out like the week of done the. This is only a couple of days after I did a half and you did a full. We don't yeah. know if it's going to be a one small loop and, and five loops. And so I don't know that well. Every turn, I was like, when is this going to end? <laughs> hey, tell me this. Is this the first time? Oh, was that the first time you ran down the, the weekend? Yeah. Yeah. First time I ran How heavy day. is that surface? Oh, it's, the legs. Yeah. I Because people are telling me hills and stuff. And there's a lot of hills and stuff around here uh, where I normally yeah. run. So I'm like, there's no hills in Dunedin Forest. But I felt it. I did feel the legs that. I was like, this, this. I don't is want to fright, yeah. But if it's the big loop, you're in for a shock. There's some <laughs> sort. That's what I read in the emails. Like, I'm missing out in the rolling hills. And I'm like, that's the reason I signed up for the half. Just yeah, to have yeah, 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 most yeah. of experience. So I'm going to have to pop down there a few times. So when you turn to the right, it's a, a climb. And then they actually have a, memori- a memorial there for the Twin Towers. And then you take a left. And then it's going to downhill. But there's this big hill at down as you get there. And I'm not messing with you. Every loop that hill gets bigger. Still the same, yeah. but it gets bigger. Yeah. This is what I've heard. Uh, this is why I wanted to do the the, the four. Yeah. Obviously, couldn't do the the pond stuff. So my advice here for Donna D would be right. Uh, have a plan, stick to it, and then don't don't get caught up in the rat race at the start because everyone falls off at from lap seven, lap eight, lap nine, lap ten. You see people's uh, pace like decreasing. Oh, yeah. If you pace it right. And you're strong, and then you're gonna finish strong. You know what I mean? Like I'd, I'd say, like I don't know, 15 seconds, of whatever pace you're thinking now, I'd add on 10 seconds. Fair. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Just, just, Better. just because of the ground and the hills. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, did you plan on running the pace you did the weekend? I got the um. Oh, you just I, wing it the weekend I, just to see how half the body. wing. The, I want to see how the body because it's been all easy runs for for quite a while. Um, so yeah. I want to just go. Uh, a little bit faster, see how long I can hold on for. And I was happy enough to hold on and get a 145 uh, and get through it. I, 150 was the goal, but when I was getting to the five minute paces, I was like, let's yeah. see how long I could hold this. And because of a, of a crash and burn for a half, like, okay, I've got four weeks just to readjust that yeah. pace for the full one. I'm not going to be anywhere near five minute pace now for the for, for yeah. a, a, I'm well aware of that. Um, I'm just conscious of how many times you're gonna pass me out, Ina. <laughs> <laughs> nah. uh, no. yeah, like right. Captain America, it's... on your left, on your left. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I, I was saying that it's great, Luke. Because so the weekend I was a bit of cracking. I was just like, because oh, I was going around my own. I was like, I had to shout. I don't want to be shouting at people. I just was running around them. You know what I mean? Because mm. the weekend was a training run for myself, like trying to just get, like, kind of simulate the for the legs to harden up and then just get the body used to the pace you know what I mean but yeah. I ran around there I ran around that with not I didn't look at me watch it was mainly all feel like I literally did I know I know where I'm at when I'm when I'm uh, doing tempos and I just wanted that feel and I don't want to take too much out of the body you have to be conscious it was four weeks out from Donna D so it was like I just don't want to be broke up. You know what I mean? And I was able to get out the next day, do 21K, do 20 miles. And like, oh, legs are a bit, the legs are a bit sore. We expect that. That, that, that surface takes a lot out of you. It's just, yeah. it's just strange. It's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Yeah.